Hello everyone and welcome to National Graduate Week with NFU Mutual. I'm Suki, I'll be your host for this presentation on behalf of CareerMap and today I am so pleased to welcome Jenny, Nisha and Sam for this session. As we go through the session, please feel free to use the chat box and if you have any questions, please send them across and we'll try to answer them during the Q&A at the end. And with that, I'm now going to hand over to Jenny to get us started. Thank you very much and good morning to you all and welcome to this morning's webinar and thank you for your hellos in the chat this morning. Um, we're really pleased that you could join us today. Um, just by way of introduction, my name's Jenny Short. I'm one of the talent development specialists at NFU Mutual and I am joined today by two of my colleagues, Nisha and Sam, both of whom have been through our graduate scheme at NFU Mutual and we'll be talking to you a little bit more about their experiences in a moment. But before I hand over to Sam and Nisha, I thought it'd be helpful to just set the scene a little bit and give you a bit of background information on NFU Mutual. Some of you may have heard of us, some may not. So uh, hopefully this little introduction will just set the scene for you. So NFU Mutual was founded back in 1910. And it was actually founded by seven farmers in Stratford-upon-Avon who saw the need for specialist insurance aimed at the rural communities. So we are actually over 100 years old. But from those very humble roots, we've grown into a multi-million pound insurance and financial services organisation. We offer insurance, pensions, investments and financial services. And we now employ around 4,000 people across the UK. So we are a UK-based organisation. But we like to think that the success hasn't gone to our head. We're really proud to remain completely customer focused and down to earth. And our ethos of trust, respect and personal service lies at the heart of everything that we do. And what's been key to our success for all of this time and continues to guide everything we do is our mutuality. So as a mutual organisation, um, we're owned and run for our now 900,000 customers and we really work hard to protect their interests. Our head office is still based in Stratford-upon-Avon, where those seven farmers founded us back in 1910. But we also have regional service centres across the UK, so namely York, Bristol, Glasgow, Belfast, for example. And we also have around 300 local agents um, who are all based across the country. Um, our agents are actually businesses in their own right, but they are licensed to sell our products. And that's really important to us because unlike other insurance companies, we don't sell our products through comparison websites or call centers. Um, we actually use our agents who are really at the heart of the community and can really offer that personal service to our customers. And whilst farming and the rural community will always remain at our heart, it's still really important. All of our customers come from all walks of life now. Um, so like I said, although the farming and rural communities are still at the heart, um, our customers come from all walks of life now. So insurance might not be an industry that you've thought about. And to be honest, when I was at university, it probably wasn't a sector that I was naturally drawn to. Um, but I can honestly say the opportunities are endless. We take on around 30 graduates every year across every division of our business. Um, so lots of opportunities um, to join the business and progress your career. So I hope that's given you a little bit of background and a little taster into what we do at NFU Mutual. But I'm now going to hand over to Nisha, who uh, is going to hopefully bring that to life a little bit more for you and talk about her experience. So thank you, Nisha. Morning, everyone. I'm Nisha and um, I joined NFU Mutual back in 2017, which I'll probably cover in my next slide, actually. Um, and I joined as a finance professional trainee. So um, I'll probably just talk a little bit about my own experience, um, a bit of advice if you did want to um, or were interested in applying for the scheme and sort of my approach to it and um, uh, do's and don'ts, really. So. I went to Aston University and graduated in 2017. My course was Accounting for Management and it was a sandwich course where I did a placement um, and I did that in Birmingham for an IT company. So when it came to applying for graduate schemes, I started really early actually. I started before final year had even started, so about August time. And um, I was applying for a few. But I was really selective with the jobs that I were applying for, just as a company is selective with 
people who they're employing. Um, I wanted to find a company that was a right fit for me. So I actually didn't pl apply for many. I'm probably looking at about um, about 20 um, in comparison to some others. And I remember at the time thinking, okay, NFU Mutual and Taylor Wimpy are going to be the last jobs I apply for before I just put all my focus into my studies and then I'm going to have to do it after I've qualified because I don't have the time. And I got offers from both, but NFU Mutual um, sort of um, stood out to me just because of how warming they were as a company, um, how quick they were with communication and just actually how excited they were for me um, for getting the job when they told me. And it was sort of really stood out to me as a great company to work for, which is one of our sort of core objectives as a company. So I joined NFU Mutual in 2017 and that was great to sort of get my graduate scheme already before um, sort of doing my final year of exams. Joined on the graduate scheme of a cohort of about 20. So yeah, Jenny mentioned there's about 30, 35 that we that we start to employ now. So I was on a much smaller cohort, but um, you really do get some friends for life. So given that I'm in five years into NFU Mutual now, one of the girls got married last month um, and I went to her wedding. So you do make some friends for life. Um, joined the uh, the grad scheme and it's a three-year course um, and for finance it's slightly different it's more structured than um, some other of the schemes that Sam will probably touch on in her 15-minute session um, but for finance it's more structured because you have to sort of cover your management side of accounting if you've got, if you've got any finance people on the call now and your financial side of accounting so it's sort of two set placements and you get to at least do a year end in both placements, which is great. And then alongside that, you do your SEMA qualifications or ACCA, whichever you prefer um, in those three years. And it's structured really well. So you get the experience you need for SEMA to be able to sign you off as a qualified accountant. So I'll, again, I'm, I'll go on to more in my next slide. I don't wanna cover everything in here and then have nothing to say in my next slide. But um, over those three years, we did plenty of courses. I did plenty of courses outside of the PT scheme, but more importantly, on the PT scheme. So from resilience courses to effective influencing to presentation courses. And the guys over in Jenny's team really do put a lot of work and effort into those three years of your, your course to, to get the benefit of different skill set technical skill sets and um, personal skill sets. Um, and then on the accounting side of it, so for any of you guys interested in the finance scheme, you get to go on loads of CPD sessions that finance hold for you just to build up your portfolio um, and for you to get your written log up to date for when submitting to SEMA. And then the sort of last one is that's me um, and I'm currently a financial reporting manager. Um, I manage a team of four, um, all sort of new this year. So um, sort of setting them up for year end, getting them their plans in place for what a year end looks like, um, which is a great development opportunity for me. So this really shows you what the grad scheme can can do for you in terms of your career progression. So yeah, I'm, I'm a manager now heading up um, regulatory reporting over in the financial reporting team um, with my own team. So if I just go on to the next slide, um, sort of about, well, we'll cover three different sections in this slide, the process of applying for a grad scheme if you are interested, the professional trainee scheme itself, and then a little bit more about my journey um, my role development um, and what I would do differently and my future plans. So one thing I've always said to anyone um, on the scheme, off the scheme is select the right company and role for yourself because that's just as important as the company selecting the right candidate for the company. Um, but also grabbing every opportunity that is presented to you. Um, and sometimes this is presented to you with no other option, so you have to do it, um, which is bittersweet, but great. Um, and then sometimes you have the option, but I'd always say go for it. So 
the process for me back when applying for um, a graduate scheme, and I think it's broadly the same now because I now get involved in the interview stages. Um, you go through your application process, you have an assessment centre, and then you have some final interviews. But again, making sure that the role and company is a right fit for you. Um, that just saves you starting a role and then realising, oh, actually, no, um, I'm not too sure. But then on the positive side saying, yeah, that's absolutely great for me. And you do this by research and prepare and understanding the company, um, understanding what company you want to work for. Um, so for finance, I knew I, well, I knew I wanted to work for a company. I wanted to work for, an, for a company that was in industry. So you can either work for practice or industry. Um, and I knew I wanted to work in industry because I liked learning about something completely different to finance. So for me, that was the insurance side of the company. Um, and it's actually really interesting to learn about something non-finance related. And I did that for my placement year as well. I didn't go to an, a, um, a practice company or an accounting firm. I went to an IT company and learned about coding um, all sorts of IT things, project management. Um, so that's something to look out for. The size of the company, whether you want to work for a small company or a large company, and if you're mutuals, um, like Jenny said, quite a big company and you learn so much. Um, but focusing more on the process, um, I've highlighted there showing your personality during the, the whole of the, the sort of interview stage in the assessment centre when applying for the job showing your personality shows whether you fit in the company and what your personality is and I remember when I was applying for NFU Mutual that was my selling point my personality um, and since getting the role I spoke to someone in finance and they were talking about um, just interviews in general and he, he was quite he's quite senior and he said to me if you're applying for a finance role it's silly if you don't look at the financial statements. And I sat there nodding my head thinking, absolutely, it's very silly. But in my head, I didn't look at NFU Mutual's financial statements at all as a finance graduate. In hindsight, I probably should have. Um, but my selling point was my personality. Um, another, another sort of pointer on there as well is um, be prepared. Um, make sure you know, well, actually, everything's done on Teams now. Um, but when I had my assessment centre, I ended up in Stratford, but at an agent's office. And I got there about half an hour early, we were sat in the car. And then 15 minutes before I went in, and I said, OK, I'm going to go in. And off my mum goes. And I'd walk in and they were like, this isn't where you need to be. Um, and my mum had already set off and I'm panicking. Um, I was about to ask if one of them could drop me off at the office. It was only about 12 miles down the road, um, but nobody offered. So... Um, my mum had come back um, and it was at a business park. So I drive into the business park and the business park that I worked at before, I'm going off on a tangent, had loads of other businesses on there, but NFU Mutual's business park, all NFU Mutual's buildings. And so I stopped at the first one. I was like, yep, here we are. And still ended up at the wrong um, office. So third time lucky, I got to the right office just on time, but then ended up crying as soon as I walked through the door because I just stressed myself out so much. So prepare, um, that's something that I didn't do. Make sure you've got the right address if interviews do tend to, or if interviews are in person. Um, and then final one, yeah, just show your personality. Um, watch, your, watch your unique selling point and make sure that that comes across. Be calm, have a coffee, have a, have a drink to calm yourself um, and then once, once you're calm, you should you should be okay. And then, yeah, if you're having a conversation, don't go with whatever's prepared in your head. If it goes off tangent or goes down a different path, don't worry about it. That's where your personality will take over. Um, professional trainee scheme. If we move on to the second point, um, a bit of advice for for you. Um, it's just well not advice, but pointers to be aware of. Um, what I found interesting, what I found difficult, um, one of them was adjusting to the working world. You go from university where some of your timetables are sparse and you have free periods, whereas the 
working world is a, is a proper nine to five and five day week. So that was a um, bit of a learning curve for me. Um, but then on top of that, I was also revising for my accounting exam. So it was sort of after five o'clock, it was five till nine revising for exams for three years. Um, finding the work-life balance was um, also a learning curve for me. And that was because given the nature, again, of of the scheme I was on, I, I was also doing my accounting exam. So it was more finding the work life social balance. Um, one had to go for me, which was the social side and up until I'd done my exams, which um, is a blessing in disguise, really. Um, I popped on there working hard and um, the, the, the professional trainee scheme at NFU Mutual really has a name for itself. Like, you're you're known as a professional trainee and um people respect that because they know what your career path is going to look like they know that you're coming in with so much enthusiasm willingness to learn um and you're going to grow up your career path um and that's that's all the hard work with jenny's team with the courses that they provide you with the opportunities that they provide you and with the networking and sort of leads on to taking those development opportunities when they arrive or when they arise. So I had a brilliant one where my manager left um, in my first year and I had to do a year end all by myself. So they're all going to be different to whatever schemes you apply for, whatever area you're working within. Um, and that one was a great development opportunity for me to showcase my skill set, but also to grow and learn, being able to communicate with really senior stakeholders um, and understanding how to present information, how to challenge senior stakeholders um, and then have your work published on Bank of England web, Bank of England's website um, and a few mutuals external website. It's, it's, it's very rewarding and had I not been presented that opportunity I don't think I'd be where I am today um, but I've got that strong backing behind me because I did take that on. And it's usually the ones that are the most scary or you have no other option that will benefit you the most. Um, and the way you can look at it is, OK, the worst that goes wrong is I fail somewhere, but I learn from it. And we're very good at providing that safety net for you, knowing that if something does go wrong, we can pick up the pieces because we've got that sort of planned in our buffer in case it does. I've made really long term friends um, from the professional trainee scheme, which is great. Um, just outside of the working world, um, we catch up now and again. I mentioned I'd gone to someone's wedding in um, one of my friend's weddings in um, October. You do get put with a really good cohort because you're all in the same um, sort of bucket at the end of the day. Um, and you'll make some long life friends um, on your cohort scheme, which is quite nice because you you, you sort of experiencing the same challenges and um, accomplishments together. And then the last one I've put on there in bold is networking. Um, if you take anything away from this, it's showing your personality and making sure you take those development opportunities and you network. And we give you all of those opportunities on the PT scheme and off the PT scheme if you decide to come off the scheme early. But I've had all of all three of those opportunities presented to me. And that's whether it's networking within your area. So for me, it would be wider finance or with the um, graduates, not just your year, but the previous years, including myself um, and Sam, because we're in different years. And um, the wider business. So on the scheme itself, when you start, you get to have a QA and a with all the directors. So the directors can put, um, a face to the name um, but also there's so many things going on within the business where networking opportunities um, come about whether that sort of um, we used to have something called brown bag lunch where um, on a lunchtime pick up a sandwich that um, from the canteen and you go and listen to someone's presentation about what they do or what challenges they're facing at the minute um, and those are more virtual now but it's still networking um, and when anybody comes in, so I, I manage two professional trainees at the minute, I get them in their first week to go out to the business and speak to them, um, introduce themselves, understand what, what they do in the business. And it really does um, help you 
um, down the line. Um, I don't know how long I've been talking to, but I feel talking to you guys, but I feel like I've been talking a while. So I'll lead on to my journey, um, sort of to finally wrap this up. So you've probably guessed that I'm, I, I'm an ex-finance professional trainee. Um, my role development is I started on the grad scheme and I I did the three years on the grad scheme, um, which I appreciate doing because I've learned so much. So on the grad scheme, I did my three years, took advantage of all the learning and development um, professional trainee courses they do. And I did my um, accountancy exams in those three years and I did the two rotational place, um, placements. And um, finishing the scheme um, in September 2019, Yep, 2019. Um, I also um, nicely um, finished my accounting exams too. And then I moved off the scheme into a finance analyst um, in the current role, that the current team that I'm in. So it was more reporting. Um, so that's reporting to companies house, reporting to the regulatory bodies um, um, like the FCA and the PRA, Prudential regulatory authorities and the financial reg regulatory authorities um, and then this year I developed further into my role and I'm now a manager in the same team so stepping away from the doing and more personal skill set where I'm developing my team um, I'm looking at the risks for the team I'm looking at the um, future impact of the team um, not only the team but for the business so um, what does the future look like with um, Brexit, with the market conditions at the minute? What does reporting look like? So when COVID came into place, what did reporting look like for NFU Mutual? Were we going to get extra reports to report on to make sure the company's liquid, which we are? What sort of reportings do the financial services need to report on? Um, are there any reports we need to do because we're a mutual? And we're looking after customers' money, um, so it's more that few, that forward-looking um, approach now, where I'm looking at the future, looking at what does that impact have for NFU Mutual as a whole from a reporting financial um, background. What does that look like for my team? How can I develop my team um, and career progression for them? Which is a is a nice new challenge for me because I've gone through it. Um, I feel like I'm in, I'm in a better position now to to support my team and um, a recent development opportunity. I was on the developing leadership program, which is a year long course. Sam will probably also also touch up on this because she was on it too, um, where I was able to develop my leadership skill set. And it was held by an external company called Red Sky, which was brilliant. Um, and it was over a year, and we really developed sort of my, my leadership style, what I want that to be, um, do's and don'ts, uh, what makes a great leader, which came again at a perfect time. Um, so regardless of not being on the PT scheme anymore, NFU Mutual as a whole will still um, make sure that they support and develop your career growth. Um, I've popped on there what, what I would do differently. And I'll probably talk more from a PT perspective is that on one of my placements in particular, I don't think I pushed and challenged myself enough. And the main reason for that is because I wasn't confident enough. Um, and I didn't think I probably had the authority to challenge or push myself. Um, but my what I would do differently is to have that confidence um, to challenge, to say I need something more challenging in my portfolio of work. So I would have got the benefit from that team in particular. Um, but where it, it hasn't sort of hindered where I've got to now. Um, my future plans um, is, well, right now it's just developing my um, current role. So I've not long been in the role from April. Um, developing my team, still developing my leadership style um, and what that looks like, how I can best support the people around me. Um, for me in particular, I thrive off 
um, people bettering themselves around me and growing other people's confidence. So um, that's going to be my future plan so far. Um, I'm currently um, planning my own wedding as well. So short future plans is plan my own wedding and um, continue with um, developing my own team um, and watching them grow as individuals. But that is it from me. Um, I think there'll be a Q&A afterwards, but I'll lead on to Sam for her slides. That would be, you'd think after two years on Teams, I would have worked out how to turn the uh, unmute button off. <laughs> uh, but there we go. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Lees, and I am a learning and development consultant for NFU Mutual. Um, I can see there's some great questions um, at the side, and I know we'll come to those at the end. So please don't think we're ignoring you. Um, and it's really nice to see that you're all interested in Nisha's brilliant presentation. So a bit of a hard act to follow, um, but I am going to talk to you about uh, my journey with NFU Mutual. So I started at NFU Mutual in 2016. Um, and for those of you good at maths, that will make me very nearly 30, uh, which is really scary when you're talking to a load of graduates who have got their whole career ahead of them. Um, but yeah, started in 2016. So I've been uh, with the Mutual for six years um, and clearly have loved it because I'm still here and I'm here advocating for why you should consider it as a future place to work. It's a really brilliant culture, really brilliant people. And I think that passion and pride just ring through everything that we do. And for me, that's really, really important. So I'm going to share with you a couple of slides. As you can see, both Nisha and I are big fans of a, a cheeky PowerPoint and making it look really pretty. Um, so just going to go with you over the next 15 minutes or so, how I got to this stage and um, what I'm doing now. And then some tips as well, more generally about being a graduate, what you can do to equip yourself for the kind of world of work and things you could be looking at now and both externally and internally. Uh, so at English, I studied geography for a year and stood at the top of Glastonbury Tour and decided that counting pollen wasn't for me. Uh, so changed to an English degree and had uh, absolute aspirations of being a journalist, moving to London and becoming, you know, the next lady in the Devil Wears Prada. Like, absolutely, that was the dream and quickly realised that I didn't have the contacts or finance behind me to do that and really make my mark and actually didn't know if I was really wanting that culture. So I started to think about what I could do and get involved with that would equip me the most appropriately for the world of work. So um, I got involved as editor of my university newspaper. I went to Plymouth University. Um, so if anybody um, has the newspaper there. I was once editor. I was involved with the radio. I was a radio presenter and they gave me really great uh, skills in communication and being able to talk to people, being able to um, make things interesting. And um, although it just seems like a bit of fun on a piece of paper, I'd really advocate for you to look at the things you're involved with and think about the transferable skills. So how does that really sell what you can do? Where are your talents? Where do your strengths lie within those? I also wanted to make sure I was getting involved with internships. Having an English degree, I was really worried that I wouldn't be um, as marketable as some of my other peers, um, even though English is brilliant, like I say, for the transferable skills. Actually, some of the um, other schemes that all graduate uh, university courses you might do are a little bit more tailored to, say, business management or doing that. So I wasn't sure where I'd obviously fit in. Do not ever let that put you off. The thing that they're looking at the most for at the end of the day is who you are as a person and the strength and talent that you can bring and the potential that you have. And your kind of degree title doesn't always say that. Obviously, maybe don't do an English degree and apply for a finance placement like Nisha. I don't think I would have got on. And then if you might be in a slightly different position if I was in control of the finances. Um, so, as I said, took an internship. I worked for six months in Cornwall at um, a place that basically 
did destination services. So if someone wants to move from China, we'd find them a house because they were working for EasyJet or something. And that really got me interested in brilliant customer service. So how you were able to um, make someone's day really different by the quality of service that you provided them. So I started thinking about hmm, customer service. I've done jobs in shops all since I was 16. Um, and just thought, you know what, I think I've got some strengths here. Let's see where I can go. Um, so as you know, uh, NFE Mutual is based in Stratford-upon-Avon. I'm actually from Stratford-upon-Avon and said, I will never move back home. I'm going to live anywhere but. And lo and behold, uh, I decided to apply for a job in Stratford-upon-Avon. Um, uh, what actually drew me to the customer services scheme was that they had placement opportunities in York, Bristol as well, and at the time up in Glasgow. So there was that little bit of separation from me from home. I was able to kind of go to Bristol and work there. So I went through the application process and I really rings true what Nisha said around it was as much about them finding us right for them as um the company being right for us that's so important and that really resonated for me and i thought well wow, i'm in good hands here because they were really caring about our impression of them as a company and really spent a lot of time showing us the culture and showing us um what it meant to be nfu mutual as opposed to you'll just do this on your scheme and this and this and this so it was a really holistic kind of view of that which i really enjoyed um so the assessment process was um, an assessment centre where we got to meet loads of people, you do various tasks, show your innovative thinking, your ability to think outside the box, how you interact with others, how you think, um, and then an interview process as well. And I know there's some questions about that, so we'll answer them a bit more in depth at the end. So I was lucky enough to get a role on the customer services scheme and we started at NFU Mutual um, and already showing that it was a great place to work. Um, we had the professional trainee scheme, which, as Nisha already alluded to, was just a brilliant experience. There are about 16 of us, all from different schemes across the um, mutual, doing different things. But having that common theme of we're all in the same boat and all learning at the same time. And we're still friends to this day. And you make a lot of connections with the cohorts above and below you as well. So Nisha was a year behind me. I'm I'm good friends with Nisha, good friends with Katie, and loads of other people from that scheme. So it's a really good way of making networks across the business and meeting the people that they know as well. Um, and we got to do really great things. We went to Lloyd's of London. Um, we went to visit agencies, we went to visit each other in their places of work. So it was a brilliant learning experience. So on the grad scheme, I, as I said, was in customer services. So I spent six months in one of our service centers in Bristol, actually working on the front line, understanding our customers, understanding that when they ring us up and need to make a claim, the, the brevity of that, I guess, um, and understanding the service that we offer. And the thing about our graduate schemes that are a little bit different, perhaps, to what they do in finance is they're a bit more open and flexible in terms of the placements you can take. So you'll always kind of do a bit in service, but then you might want to do more of an operational role. So actually go and understand how we do our workforce management, how we manage the operation, how we manage our claims with suppliers. You might want to go into underwriting, so take a more technical role or claims leadership and management. So actually setting the strategy for how we deal and pay claims. There was so much going on there. I was really interested in the operation side. I felt that's where my skill set was most aligned to. And I spent some time in customer experience, understanding if something goes wrong for a customer on their journey, what are we doing and how can we rectify that? So what things can we put in place? Um, I then went on a placement as a project manager in our claims team that I was really scared of doing um, because I'm not a project manager. I don't have any experience. And the scheme really encouraged me to take that and, and face those fears because um, those who were supporting me, so Aileen on the scheme and the managers who all, you know, really highly regard the PT scheme, could just see that this was an opportunity. Um, 
we had uh, uh, another guy in my cohort who was on an underwriting scheme and he found I don't want to say a cure for goat tuberculosis but he found like a way we could underwrite it and we called it his goat because it was this really impressive thing that he'd done and been enabled to do and made such an impact on our business you know being a, a graduate and we were all like we want a goat we want our thing that really makes our mark um so i saw that as my opportunity in the claims project team to do that so managing change helping people through um their their kind of change curve and actually that's really taken my career in the direction it's taken now so i came off scheme after two years as a claims project manager and i was able to work in various different change programs and get that experience as a project and a change manager and then just kind of felt like I wanted to do something else. And the thing about NFU Mutual is that there is always the comments and opportunities to move around. So what I will say is the scheme that you enter on doesn't have to be the scheme that defines the rest of your career. I know people that have successfully moved around because they've gained skills from a business area. And actually the fact that they can move to another business area is seen as a really desirable thing because they have that knowledge and context to help them succeed. Uh, so I actually went to Group IT, and if you knew me, you will know I'm not a technical person, but actually the skills in communication, project management, change management, stakeholder management, being able to talk to people, lead them through something, were all skills that they needed within that role in IT. So I moved to IT and spent some time as um, an operational assistant, so supporting the IT executive and his senior management team in getting stuff done, basically. So the little projects that he needed, the encouragement some of the teams needed, I was that person who could support in that. And that led me to a role in IT in portfolio management. So looking at all the little bits of change that we had, and seeing how actually we can put that under some governance, a, a wrapper that made more sense. Um, so I spent some time doing that and um, then decided that I wanted to apply for the Developing Leaders Programme. And my next point around the professional trainee scheme and NFU Mutual is there is really a structure in place to support you throughout your career. So you start on the PT scheme and it's not like, well done, you've got a job, we're never going to talk to you again. It's actually, OK, well, that's that step. So you've done your, your professional trainee scheme. Now let's move you into space where you're looking at developing your leadership. And once, you know, I've done a few years of making my mark as a, a leader, actually, how can I move that to senior leadership in that more higher management space and then actually that more strategic decision making so there is a kind of a, a real route that they think about you so it's not just a one and done approach it's a continual career long view that they take on you an investment that they take on you as well um so dlp was a brilliant um scheme enabled me to look at different things in terms of how i managed people but actually how i led them so what things am I putting in place to inspire, grow, have that strategic thinking? And again, that was another cohort, another network of people, another opportunity to do a project that made a real business impact. So again, there's not many places that I know that allow you to have that platform and opportunity. Um, so in line with DLP and my, my role as an IT project manager, I was kind of like, you know what, I, I need a bit more people change. And I took a role in learning and development. So I have been around a little bit. And again, for me, that's a really positive thing about a company is that ability to move. So I work in learning and development as a consultant. So still working in change. I am a consultant on our strategic programs. So our multi-million pound programs, ensuring that our people have the skills, knowledge and attitudes, behaviours in order to land the change and it's a space that I completely love it's really people focused get to lead workshops get to kind of put all my skills in action and in line with the DLP piece I'm actually wanting to now find my depth in that role and really become an SME and grain credibility as a thought leader so how am I progressing the business in that way so finally, the future and the, the great unknown, um, or exciting unknown. And for me, it's that developing further, really bringing that into play, being able to um, 
just ensure that I am credible, that I'm leading through knowledge and passion um, and connecting across the business, using my network, my brilliant network of people that I've made to make real brilliant business decisions. And I've just got some tips um, that I wanted to share uh, really quickly. So just for you guys, um, something that DLP, sorry, is Developing Leaders Programme. I've just seen that, sorry. Uh, the one thing about the mutual that I will say when you apply, because you're going to love it, um, definitely start an abbreviation list. Um, we all got one. It was one of the most handy artifacts because people are like DLP or BDA and all of these things. You're like, what is that? Um, don't be daunted. As I said, what you do next in your career doesn't define you. You might want to apply for a HR scheme, a finance scheme, just because you're applying for that. And you can put your passion and, and time into that. That doesn't mean that's what you're going to do for the next 40 years. There's so much opportunity beyond that. So just take it in the kind of be here now. What is that next step going to bring you and provide you? And what can you bring to it? Don't think of it as I've got to look at it as a 15 year career plan. Be curious. Look into things that you may not necessarily think are what you could see yourself in. I couldn't see myself working in insurance, as you can probably tell, I've got bright orange hair. I was never gonna work in insurance, I was gonna be a journalist, but actually thinking about, just because it's that topic or that sector or that brand, what can you bring to that and how can you change, grow and shape and bring your expertise to that? Take opportunities, even now, your careers are starting now. So what can you be doing now to enhance yourself, enhance your CV? You don't know actually what they may open up to you. You might find the next passion in your life by doing something you may have turned your nose up at if you weren't being curious about it. When you're a graduate or even in what you're doing now, be bold, ask people, what can I be doing more of? Ask for feedback, ask for challenge. That's the way our PTs really succeed is when they're going, I can see that's happening. Can I get involved with that? That's a really positive thing. And finally, be authentic. You are enough. Um, throughout the process, throughout the application process, if you come in with your big bravado on, they're going to see right through that. Be yourself, be vulnerable. That's a really important thing. People at the mutual, wherever you go in life, want to help. They want to help you succeed. So be happy to ask questions, be happy to show who you are, because that's definitely the best way to be. So I'm really sorry for talking at you and probably talking 10 miles too quick, but I hope that that's given you an impression of, of where we work and the type of people that we are. And I think we're opening the floor to questions now. Yes, Sam, thank you so much, uh, Nisha and Jenny, for sharing all the information that you have. We've had lots of questions come through, so <laughs> I think it will be a mountain to climb <laughs> with the amount of questions that have come through. Um, so, yes, let's let's just get started. Uh, so Ben has asked, did you always want to go into the finance industry? I think if we both hear Nisha and Sam, both your views on that. Um. My actual dream job, when I was younger, I wanted to go into dentist if I was good at science, but I wasn't. My dream job, if I ever won the lottery, would be to be a wedding planner. Um, and in the future, I can see myself going into the industry. I've only said I'll go into it if someone's selling their business so I can pick it up and carry on with it. But sensibly, yes, because I we were given the opportunity at A-level to study accounting as a as a, an A-level um, sort of subject. And it was the only subject that I actually enjoyed going to and sometimes even turn up to the class when I haven't got a class um, because I'd get the A and B timetables mixed up. Um, and I liked the problem solving, the structure to, to um, just finance, um, in particularly financial accounting. I like structure. The course gives you structure. The job itself gives you structure. A set of financial statements gives you structure. It's got to go somewhere. And I like that structure in life. So, yes, I knew I did like finance. I like, and I quickly learned at university, I liked financial accounting as opposed to management accounting because, again, structure is the key word for me here. I liked that it was a yes and no um, as opposed to being sort of subjective. Um, 
So in short, yes, I did know I went to go into finance, but that's probably because I had the, 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 the sort of opportunities available to me early on from A level. Mm -hmm. um, and if I didn't have that, I think I would have probably still found that answer out later on, just through a different path. Okay. And Sam, I know you said you, you changed degrees and you went into English, <laughs> English Lit. Um, what about you? Did you envision yourself going into the finance industry? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I wanted to be a Spice Girl when I was growing up. So, um, no, I, I for me, what was always really important was I was kind of ambivalent to where it was. What I wanted to do was have an opportunity, not in a big headed way, but to shine. So to use my skills in a meaningful way. So I'd always say approach it in that sense of, of where can you shine how can you use your talent in the best way it doesn't don't define yourself always by a sector or a trade or whatever okay thank you and uh, i'd just like to add one extra yeah. bit sorry because i think i answered that question quite literally as in finance as opposed to the industry itself i applied for a couple of different jobs that weren't all finance industry but what really sold me was the people at nfu mutual so no but the fact that they were just as excited as me when they told me I got the job, it was a no brainer for me to choose between Taylor and P and NFU Mutual. Thank you so much for adding that, Nisha. Um, and I think that leads us nicely on to the next question. What surprised you most about the industry when you did join? The, for me, sorry, Sam. <laughs> but I don't want to um, do, yeah. The amount of sheer learning I did, um, I, you probably call me ditzy actually because I didn't know what a mutual was I didn't look at the financial accounts before my interview you'd think what is this girl doing and I still managed to get here but the amount of how big the company is um and the amount you learn and the amount of time people give to you when learning when I joined that was um am I meant to be giving any tips in this question in this answer but yeah the amount the, the amount I learned um and how it opened the doors up for me just for understanding the company in general not even finance but absolutely everything okay perfect Sam would you like to add or do you want to move on to a different question now I think I think you had you summarized perfectly Nisha okay and um Jada's asked what support do you get from NFU to develop your leadership qualities? Loads. Um, I think you're always seen, I, I'd even say off scheme, there's even if you um, developing leaders program, senior leadership program, there is a real route for you to follow. Um, but it doesn't just happen at learning interventions, it's on the job, it's by the culture that we have as well. And that's something that sets us apart from other organisations. You can't buy culture. It's something that we have created and maintain really impressively. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And um, Jenny, are you still there? I'm I just... am, yeah. Okay, yep. perfect. We can hear you. Uh, so we've got a question. Uh, Mohammed has asked, is the application process hard and do you have any tips to help you succeed? OK, so we, we would hope that our application pro process isn't too hard. Um, hopefully from from hearing Nisha and Sam and myself as well, you can see that we absolutely are very down to earth. Um, we absolutely want to see people at their best. So um, we do ask you to apply and upload a CV to us. Um, some of the schemes do have um, minimum requirements. So be that a 2-2, two -two, a 2-1. Some schemes are any degree, um, other schemes are more focused. So around actuary, we will be looking at those sort of math skills, but many of them are any degree, 2-2 um, two -two and above. Um, so we ask you to upload your CV. Um, you'll then be invited to a video interview. Um, and again, that is really for you to show us your personality and yourself. So there's nothing technical in that video interview. It's really about you showing us your personality, showing how you can communicate, showing why you're interested in joining us as a business. Um, we then invite candidates to assessment centre and we try and keep that as relaxed as possible as well. So uh, you may be asked to do a presentation, but we would give you preparation time to do that beforehand. You may be involved in a role play um, you may be able to pull on some of those great experiences that you've had and, and bring them to life and, and show how the skills that you have and the skills that you want to develop will really uh, support you. 
um, in your role at NFU Mutual. So um, I would like to say it's not too difficult. Um, and as I say, no surprises, no tricks up our sleeves. We really do want to see you as a person. Can I add to that, Jenny? Because I think yeah, it's really important. Absolutely. It's really hard when you're a graduate because you. I think I certainly came with, oh, God, I don't know anything about this. I've got to be perfect. I've got to be the expert. And if I was an expert, I wouldn't be applying. Like the whole point of a yeah. team is that you develop and grow and yeah. learn. So there's a question around confidence, and I hope it kind of answers that in part as well, because the confidence comes from who you are as a person and what you know innate in yourself that you're able to bring. That's what they're looking for. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny. Absolutely. Not how, We're I not know expecting skill. No. I know everything about insurance. Here's our insurance directive 3700. It's really about what you can bring and who you are and how you're going to help NFU Mutual grow by innately who you are and your capability. Thank you so much, Sam. That was a wonderful way of putting it. Um, Freya has asked, can you give any advice on how to show your personality on an application? Oh, do you want me to pick that up first and then you might yeah. you might want to add yeah. so we're re really interested we do take a look at your cvs as well we're really interested in those things that you do outside of university or those areas of interest that you have um but actually our video interview um is really your opportunity to show your personality and show who you are um, by telling us about yourself so um although you know the the application is your CV really shine and show your personality I think one also thing to add there is don't use a generic CV. Yeah. Because we're not silly. We know you're going to be applying for other jobs. So don't use a generic CV. Make sure you look at the job description for the particular role you're looking at. Make sure you research into the company. But yeah, just to echo what Jenny said, those extracurricular curricular activities. So I included extra things on my CV, whether it was charity work, whether it was mentoring, yeah. um, just to show that outside of university, we kept ourselves busy. And that's a really um, good point, Nisha. You know, that really aligns, it really shows how that aligns to NFUM's values as well. So we, yeah. you know, we have a charitable giving fund at NFU Mutual. We're really yeah. heavily involved in in that um social governance and, and getting involved in charities and, and what have you. And that really sits that's really sits well with our values. If you can you can understand what our values are and, and highlight those things in your C V that really align to that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for those answers. Um, Michael has asked, what is the starting salary and are there opportunities for promotion and progression? Absolutely. So do you want me to pick that up again? <laughs> so our graduates come in around £28,000, but are all part of our group bonus scheme. So um, absolutely, um, you are treated like any other employee um, within NFU Mutual. You come in on a permanent group permanent contract so you actually have access to all the benefits that any other employee has at NFU Mutual um, be that healthcare, be that you know your pension be that money off vouchers um, for lots of things that we have um, a really generous group bonus scheme um, and pay rewards every year as well and I think as well it's really important package you're being offered as well that's so important and the other thing, Sam, which I'll just pick up because I know there was a question in there as well, but actually that working from home is available with NFU yeah. Mutual. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, within my division, we can work 80% of the time at home. So just one day a week in the office, that's rolling as well. So they're really flexible in terms of that, that ability to yeah. do that. And I think actually all three of us this morning are working from home. So, uh, yeah, that is absolutely. Although amazing. I do have a cow in my background. So, you know, keep, <laughs> keeping the office very alive. on run. <laughs> um, thank you so much and Jenny you read my mind on what the next question is going to be so thank you for answering that um, Molly, has, Molly has asked what qualities do you need to work in insurance oh I think it depends sorry just jumping in I, I, I think it depends on where because although there's insurance so the selling the the kind of regulatory the compliance all of that stuff for an insurance company, there's so many supporting functions. So HR, L and D, where I work, learning and development, finance, um, operating, <laughs> properties, all of those different places. So actually, it doesn't just matter. Uh, I think there's no specific. Uh, so for the insurance industry, I'd say for the mutual, we put our customers above and beyond everything. So actually, putting that customer. So people not profit first ETHO is like really rings true with me. 
um, and that drives our culture. So I'd say it's a care of people for insurance at the end of the day. You are the people in finance are boring, but it, it's not. It, it's, you know, um, you do this thing called insights um, when you join and you get to sort of see what sort of personalities you are yellow being involve me blue being give me the detail green being value driven red being tell me and go away um and i think i was more borderline blue and yellow so very hyper um probably hyper is not the right word but probably like energetic um uh and then um give me the detail too so um i with that question i think all personalities fit um, but go linking back to Sam, it's just having that caring, cult, like caring nature and um, value driven. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's a human at the end of the day. And I, if you treat everyone like a normal person, even down to, the, you know, like the cleaners, um, that's what everyone at NFU Mutual is like. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. And um, just looking at the time, I think we'll just do two final questions. Um, so Julian has asked, do you earn any formal qualifications on the grant schemes? Uh, yeah. Jenny can probably answer. But yeah, I absolutely. So um, depending on what scheme you, you go into, um, for, formal qual qualifications are um, woven into every scheme. So uh, Nisha mm -hmm. talked about the qualifications that she did. All of those are paid for for you and you are very well supported throughout the scheme in terms of study leave if you need that time off to to, to do assignments etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so we very very much support in terms of getting professional qualifications on on each of our schemes and it's relevant to the scheme that you apply to i don't think the issue in our cases but like i've got managed i've got prince to project management change management portfolio management program management uh, cii you know, all of those things, your curriculum, you go to your lectures, your seminars, you're kind of told what to learn, what to think, here's an essay, do it within these boundaries. And you move into a business environment and it's very self-driven. You are going to get as much out of any scheme as you are prepared to put into it. If you're prepared to go and network, have that confidence, go talk, be curious, go find things out. You're going to reap the rewards of that. Um, I think that that self-driven, proactive nature was the biggest change an eye-opener for me certainly yeah definitely um i'd agree with that and one thing i'll say is have high expectations for yourself because that is what's going to drive you um i remember when i failed my first exam i cried even after i passed the retake i was that bitter about it everyone else around me was like really comforting and supportive but having that expectation of myself pushed me further um and it, it's worth it absolutely okay thank you so much and that brings us to the end of the session thank you to all the speakers sam jenny and nisha for joining us and thank you to all the attendees i really hope that you've gained some valuable insights into nfu mutual and all the opportunities that are available um do any of you have any last few words that you want to share with the group yeah, if I could just say thank you very much for joining us today. And I've got two seconds, if I can, just to confirm that, yes, we do have uh, sales schemes. And yes, we do have lots and lots of data analyst scheme and um, vacancies as well. So uh, do take a look out for those. Um, but thank you all very much for joining us this morning. And I hope uh, you found it really useful. And if anybody has LinkedIn and wants to ask me anything further, I'm always happy to connect on LinkedIn as well. <laughs>